Thank you for the food we eat. After saying grace over your family meal, your next move may well be to reach for the salt. Even if the quick prayer did not give you pause for thought, the simple act of sprinkling salt over your meal should do so. Have you ever stopped to wonder where that salt comes from? It's quite likely that the salt on your table came from a salt mine, and that little fact is going to cause a bit of a problem for a Bible literalist or creationist. Table salt, sodium chloride or halite, deposits are formed by the evaporation of saline water. The world's oceans have a salinity of about 3.5%, with around 78% of that being sodium chloride. And so you can imagine for yourself how much salt would arise from the evaporation of, say, 100 feet of water what would be required to leave a salt deposit over a mile thick. Underground deposits of salt are from a marine environment. Lagoons or areas which became isolated from the main oceans would increase in salinity by evaporation. As salinity increased, the dissolved salts would crystallise and be deposited as sediment in the order of their solubility. The halite first, followed by potassium and magnesium salts. This process would have had to continue for a vast amount of time to produce the salt deposits hundreds of feet thick, which are found all around the world. Eventually, the salt would be buried by subsequent periods of sedimentation. Over geological time, many of these salt deposits became deformed. Due to the low density of salt in relation to the subsequent sedimentation layers, the salt would continue drifting to the top through faults and fissures, forming diapers. These would then mushroom out often to form salt domes, which can be several miles deep and many miles across. Evidence for this abounds in the geology of salt deposits, which have been studied in detail detail for several reasons. The association of salt domes with oil and gas deposits made prospectors keen to identify them early on. More recently, the geology has been studied to explain and try to mitigate the effects of exposing buried salt beds to water through mining activity, which can result in the resolution of the salt and subsequently the creation of sinkholes. The cavities resulting from salt mining activity have also been considered for a variety of uses, including the storage of fossil fuels, nuclear waste, domestic waste, and as energy reservoirs. So we understand the geology quite well. The 1984 publication Atlas of Salt Domes in the East Texas Basin, available online from the University of Texas, provides a fine introduction to this subject. Geology suggests that the Gulf of Mexico Basin began to form as North America began to separate from South America. Initially, the basin was not connected to the Atlantic, but experienced periodic inundation. Repeated inundations, followed by long dry evaporation periods, resulted in the extensive salt deposits now found along the Gulf from Texas to Florida and known as the Luan Salt. Each time we find a salt dome we discover that it has forced its way up through hundreds of feet of subsequent sedimentary layers and so we know that over a period of time enough seawater evaporated to produce a layer of salt over a mile thick. Subsequent to this layer upon layer of sediments were deposited to a depth of around four miles for example at the Oakwood Dome. Here we have the salt layer pushing up through several hundred feet of carbonate dead animal sediment followed by a thousand feet of shale and sandstone, then another carbonate layer hundreds of feet thick, and so it goes on. Science provides an explanation and a proven mechanism by which the geology of the salt domes can be explained. Creationism has no explanation for the deposition and deformation of this evaporated salt. God did it is not a mechanism. Geology rocks.